right, everybody. Nestor, again, with more knowledge for your veteran face holes on how to write your veteran essays. Today, we're going to talk about the ingredients of a story. Why are we doing this? It's, you know, video three of a series that doesn't really need to be watched in order, but it's recommended that you do. Uh, but why? Why don't we just say, like, well, here's how to write your essay. Why aren't we actually writing an essay yet? Well, I like to compare three things, writing, math, and jujitsu. And we'll use the jujitsu in this case. If you wanted to get ready for a tournament, you can't just go in and say, prepare me for a tournament. I mean, you can, I don't know how that would work, but you would have to learn the guard and then you'd have to learn some sweeps from the guard. You would have to learn some defenses from this and that position before you even go to your first, you know, white belt match. Unless you wrestled beforehand, which would compare to like being a poet, which most of us probably aren't. So that's why we're talking about this. Two, is that as we make these essays, going back to the uh, that person principle that we talked about in the first video, and then the how stories make you that person that we talked about in the second video, these are things that no one can do for you. So you can't write a draft and then pay someone a thousand dollars and have them like edit it. You know, people do make a lot of money doing that, but they can't draw out your stories. Only you can do that. And then the third, and I think the most important reason is, why the fuck not? Because this hopefully is not the last time you need to write and represent yourself with writing to apply for something, whether it's a job or a grad program, or uh, I mean, maybe your next marriage or relationship, who knows? But being able to represent yourself with a story is probably the most compelling Thing you can do with written word. Okay, so having said that, real quick, this is one of my go-to quotes. A tragic event is not a story. And that's just to say that we're not saying like, A, that you have to have something horrible happen to you, which is the maybe the, this kind of veteran misconception that everybody needs these demons or these like, uh, you know, these harrowing circumstances, these dangerous circumstances in order to have a story. You'll see with some examples uh, as we go on later on and break down some essays that there are plenty of ways to go about this. With that said, three super basic ingredients make a story. And we're not talking about novels or even like literary short stories. We're just talking about representing an event from your life that you want to weave into your narrative of growth that makes for a strong personal statement, okay? And these three ingredients are a person, because we need to know to whom these events are, are taking place or who is taking action, a place, because we need to know where and when they are, and conflict, because that is, well, You'll see that is, that is really the the linchpin, the maypole that everything revolves around. All right, so this this is a piece from it's a, it's a piece from a real veteran essay that was used to get into a, a really good university, and I want you to take a second, pause it, read it. I'm not going to read it to you, and see what you notice about those three ingredients. See what you get to know about this narrator. That's just the person who's talking, the first person, the I. See what you get to know about this narrator. See what you know about their location. And, um, and see what you know about like what they want. We haven't gone into conflict yet, but just see what, see what you get from this piece. Assuming you've done that, this is what I get. And I've color-coded it. Remember, blue is person. So I learned from this piece that... This narrator is in the army, and they're a medic, and they are doing their job, right? They're kind of a, a decent medic, at least, because uh, this medic care, this narrator cares about finding and making sure they're, we haven't specified the gender, but I know it's a he, uh, he cares about finding his fellow troops and making sure they're okay. So those are really good things to know about the narrator. Next, we have, and, and this is you know, just something that I'm saying, uh, the details make the, the readers able to relate to the person who's speaking. 
So place, oh God, what's happening here? Place, I got half past midnight, which is time, but we, we included that in there. So, so we can imagine it's dark outside, so that's like a sensory visual. Uh, a Louisiana swamp, right? So we know a geographical location, and then we even get a sensory description. It's a humid marshland. So we can kind of imagine what the air is like and what we're stepping in. Those are all really powerful, uh, gritty details that say, these are my surroundings. And now, real quick, we'll talk about conflict. And what I mean by conflict is, it's just, you want something, you want something that you can't get, okay? The, you want to meditate, but you have to put your kids to bed. You want breakfast, but you have to get out of bed. Or, you know, the kid wants a quarter, but has to wait for his tooth to fall out. So the pattern is you want X, but Y stands in your way. You want something you can't have, and from that, you get growth. Another quote I like is, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. So using what we know about conflict now and the example that we showed, this is what we get. I've had some rough starts, but this jump is the worst, right? So we know there's a jump, and actually from the previous paragraph in this essay, you get that this person is a paratrooper. So, so that's conflict, right? You want comfort, but this is going to be a struggle. Uh, this, I can hear the loud thuds and crude exclamations. That, that's tension. Maybe it's not strictly speaking conflict, but it's like, okay, people are hitting the ground hard and they're cussing. Uh, that, that's uncomfortable. That's scary. I find each of them, make sure they're okay, and then follow them through the human marshland to our objective. So now we know that even if we don't know what the mission is that they're on, or it's a training exercise, we know that they're on a mission, and so we can kind of trust that this narrator is, is like, okay, I'm the medic, I need to make sure my guys are okay while we're on this training exercise. It doesn't matter what the mission is, because the medic's mission is just that his guys are okay. And again, this is the beginning of a 44 hour trek. That's conflict, right? I'm about to walk with this uh, rucksack, I think it says later or earlier how heavy it is, um, for 44 hours. So, and you see, and all this happened in, you know, how many lines is this? Let's see how many words. Uh, less than 100 words. And we established a place, we established a person, and we established this person's desires. And this is towards the beginning of the essay. So we get this feel, and then this, this person goes into the significance of this event, and what he learned, and how he grew from it, and how that changed him. And we'll go over whole essays later on. But I just wanted to bring this as an example so that we can cover these details. And, and for this video, the homework for this video is, in, in the last one, in Tell Me a Story, the exercise was Tell Me a Story, and it started with this one time in whatever place, something happened. So assuming you did that, and if you didn't, please go back and watch it and, and do the exercise, because these will build up to making your first draft of that essay. So take that exercise and look at it through this, this prism of the things we just went over and ask yourself, what do you know about the narrator? Who's talking? If you don't know two or three of these details, include them in there, weave them in there somehow. Where are they? And that includes time. So, and it doesn't have to be, you know, it's 8 a.m. It can be just daytime, or it can be a bright, sunny day, or it can be a cold night. Just something that tells us kind of what to picture. And I encourage you to try to add these sensory details, like, you know, the wind was blowing, or, you know, the, the leaves were especially parched or something. Something that, something tangible and visualizable. And then finally, what do they want slash what is standing in their way? That's the conflict that we talked about. So whatever is happening, I think in the last one, there was the, there was the SEAL training, right? 
who was the boat crew leader, they wanted to win races. And they had the guy who pooped his pants, right? So there's all this conflict of like, what do we do? And they want to stay dry and comfortable, but now they have to get wet to do this other thing. That's hell a conflict, okay? So look at your thing and ask yourself, what does this narrator want? And what's in their way? And if that's not clear, can we tease that out a little bit? That's all I got for this video. Again, we talked about the, the three ingredients, the three really basic ingredients to a story. In previous videos, we talked about how a story makes you that person and why you want to be that person. And in later videos, we'll talk about how to bring everything together for your first draft and then how to revise your draft and work in workshops. But for now, just do this exercise and work on that little mini story. See you next time.